Hi guys, so today I'm coming to you from MSC World Europa and in this video I'm going to give you a full ship tour of this huge ship starting from the bottom and working our way all the way up to the top. Now, we are going to cover every single venue in this video so grab a cup of tea or a coffee or maybe even a cocktail, make yourself comfortable and let me show you one of the biggest and one of the newest ships out on the ocean. Okay, MSC World Europa, where do we even begin? Now this ship is absolutely enormous. She's over 330 meters long. Deck numbers go all the way up to deck number 22. And over the next hour, I want to show you every single inch of this cruise ship. Now we're going to be looking at drop slides that go for 11 decks. We're going to be looking at promenades that stretch for over 100 meters. And yeah. It's going to be quite a ride, so on that note, let's get started down on deck number five. As I said, this tour is going to go from the bottom and work our way up to the very, very top. So, deck number five, there's only actually one venue to walk you around here, and that is this restaurant. Now, the La Folia restaurant is an included complimentary dining restaurant, and you'll find out if you can dine in here, because you'll be assigned to a restaurant on your cruise card, when you get on board. Now, complimentary dining on MSC, the way that that works is that when you board your ship, on your cruise card, you'll be given a table number, you'll be given a restaurant, and that's where you'll be expected to dine for the nights of your cruise that you would like to utilize the main dining room. Now, if for whatever reason you don't like your dining room or you don't like what table you're at, usually you can ask to move, but yeah, I haven't found any real issues with dining rooms on the ships. Now, moving up a deck, deck number six, we're remaining on the subject of complimentary and included dining. So, La Folia that we were in a second ago is really kind of brown and earthy, whereas you come up here and the theme being bubbles, it's all water themed, there's kind of bubbles on the floor, there's bubbles on the roof that I'll show you in a second. I really enjoyed the theming in here. Now, this restaurant, if you are cruising on World Europa, is the only included dining option that is open at lunchtime. Now, obviously you will have the buffet that will be open at the top of the ship that we'll get to much, much later on. But if you're like me and you quite enjoy on a day at sea to come and chill out and have your lunch properly served to you, then you'll be doing that in Bubbles Restaurant. Now, one thing that I did find really good about this venue is that there's quite a lot of windows and quite a lot of chairs and tables that are at windows. So yeah, if you want a window seat, usually not an issue. Now moving slightly further forward, we've got two dining venues now. You've got Hexagon on one side, and on the other side, you've got Esagono. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you translate Hexagon, you end up with Esagono. So <laughs> yeah, you're probably getting a bit of a feel as we walk down here, but both of these restaurants are 100% identical to each other. So for that reason, I'm just going to show you in one side because genuinely, if you folded the ship in half, this would just replicate on the other side. It's actually quite impressive how they've done it. Now this dining venue, I think it looks pretty similar to the majority of kind of main included dining venues. It's quite nice how it's all carpeted. It doesn't feel like a dining hall as such. One thing that I do miss on this ship, to be perfectly honest, is a more grand dining room. I really, really like the kind of ballroom dining formats, but I think on a ship this big, they've just had to go down this route of having quite cover intensive and cover heavy restaurant venues. Now coming slightly further forward again, this is where we hit guest services. Now beside guest services, you've got the shore excursion desk, which I'll show you in a second. But this is where you'll come if you've got any issues or any questions while you're on board. Now, as we said, directly beside guest services is shore excursions. Now, you can book excursions here or you can book a few decks up. But bear with me and I'll take you up there and show you in due course. Or if you want to jump to it now, check out the chapter title headings in the notes of this video and you should be able to click over now. Now directly opposite guest services is the Dolce Vita bar. This bar is the latest entertainment option available on the ship and you'll quite often find that the live entertainment in here will still be going strong at 1am 
2 a.m. I think the latest I saw it was about 2.30, heading towards 3 a.m. it would finish. But generally I found that if people were at the bar and if people were drinking and if people were still out and about, they would continue some kind of entertainment here. And even when the band finished, they would then kick in with just music in the background to keep everyone entertained. Now this is also where you'll find what I believe to be one of, if not the, only dance floors on MSC World Europa. I didn't see at any point any traditional ballroom in here, but it was a pretty busy dance floor if you want to come for a dance at night. Now directly beside the Dolce Vita bar, heading towards the front of the ship, is MSC's now pretty famous actually onboard chocolatier. Now I was on the ship at the point of Easter, so you can see a couple of Easter eggs coming across there. And I thought it was a really, really nice touch for MSC to actually recognise an event such as Easter and be offering chocolate eggs for sale in here. Now, one thing that I would say about this chocolate shop is that it's not cheap. It isn't cheap, but the quality is really, really good. I love nothing more than coming down here at the start of a sea day, buying a bar of chocolate and then having that back in my cabin at some point. One thing that I also would add here is that the chocolate creations are absolutely mind-blowing. What you're seeing on the screen at the moment, all of these individual sculptures are completely made from chocolate. And <laughs> yeah, I've seen this now on, I've seen it on a couple of MSC ships. They've also got this on Virtuosa. They've also got it, I believe, on Meraviglia. And yeah, I am blown away every single time I get on board. I just cannot believe that someone can actually make that out of chocolate. Now this feature I did want to show you, over one side of the chocolate shop, you can actually order your own bespoke chocolate bar. So if I click through here, you can see you can pick from the different flavours of chocolate, you can then add what toppings you want on it, you can order a message to be written on it, and then the guys will tell you at what time they're going to make your bar, and you can actually come back and watch them do it. So I really, really enjoy, I really enjoy the kind of personalised element of that. Now, directly opposite the chocolate shop, you've got MSC Future Cruise. Now, as the name suggests, this is where you can come if you're looking to book on to a cruise at some point in the future. And that is all in the middle of this huge indoor promenade galleria section, which is absolutely beautiful to take a walk down. Now, the next venue directly beside Future Cruise is the Dark Ride 5G Cinema Motion Simulator. Now, I didn't have time to try this during my cruise, unfortunately, but I have heard from various people that they seemed to really enjoy it. And directly beside the 5G cinema, you've got the Luna Park Arena. Now, this venue doubled up as a sort of, like, nightclub type venue, and they also did some pretty unusual shows in here. Personally, I'm not sold on this venue from what I saw during my cruise, but let me know, if you've cruised on World Europa, did you think the Luna Park Arena worked or what do you think could change? Now directly beside the Luna Park, you've got quite a small game arcade. Now, as much as I say it's small, I guess it's just not very wide, but it, it has got a decent length to it. And remember that if you're planning to cruise, look at options for fun passes, which will allow you a little bit more credit when you're playing in areas like the arcade. Now, directly opposite the arcade, this is one of my favourite additions that MSC have decided to put on the world-class cruise ships. This is pizza and burger. And again, as the name suggests, I'm going to be saying that a lot through this video, but as the name suggests, this is where you can come for pizzas or, you guessed it, burgers. Now, <laughs> it's actually the first time that I've ever seen food available in the Galleria section of an MSC ship free of charge but if you've never cruised with MSC before please let me tell you the pizza on here is brilliant so please make sure you stop by here it's open late every day so no excuses now directly beside pizza and burger you've got a phone box now I'm not going to give you too much information on the phone box or what if anything is beyond the phone box because that's one of the things I really like about this ship this is a secret venue, and in order to gain access into here, you're, well, you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. So, unfortunately, no further information on the phone box from me, other than, shh, remember it's a secret. Now, on that note, 
things that aren't a secret, so let's get back to the venues. So deck number seven. We've gone from the phone box at the very front of deck six all the way back to the panorama lounge at the back of deck seven. Now, this is probably one of my favourite venues on board World Europa. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. The thing that I enjoy most about this is that this is a really good example of MSC, I guess, testing the water with new concepts. You'll find in here acrobat shows where they're swinging from the lights. You'll find really immersive dance experiences where they take up the whole dance floor and even come into the crowd. And honestly, look at that view. I can't, I can't praise that venue enough, so please check that out. Now, coming out of the Panorama Lounge, you've then got the casino. So this casino operates as a double-sided casino, so pretty similar to what you'll find on a lot of other MSC ships where it takes up the whole width of the ship. And actually, from a length point of view, it's pretty long. You'll see as we go around now, I'll let you just have a look around here. The casino isn't really, it's not really my forte, so I can't offer you a huge amount of advice. But you will see that the build of this casino, or the design rather, is that you've got the, the bar in the middle, and then you've got one strip of machines down one side, and the other side of the room is more focused on like gaming tables. So if you want to play roulette, if you want to play blackjack, whatever, you'll find that over this side. And if you want to play on the slot machines, you're more likely to stick to the other side of the room. Now the casino on World Europa is exactly the same as a, pretty much, well, every other cruise ship where the casino can't open until you're in international waters. So if you're in port, then you won't be able to gamble. But when the ship leaves the port and heads out to sea, then this will open and it'll be open, to be honest, pretty much all night. It definitely stayed up later than me every single evening. Now heading out of the casino and coming back towards the front of the ship, the first venue that you'll find here is the Photoshop. You've also got a tech shop here, so if you need to buy anything for your camera, then this is exactly where you can pick that up. Now from a photo point of view, throughout your cruise, you'll have photographers that will take your photo if you want it taken, and this is where you can come and view them and purchase them. You can also come in here for a much more private photo shoot, if that takes your fancy. And directly opposite the Photoshop, you've got the MSC Foundation. Now, this is becoming increasingly common across the cruise industry, where the cruise line will usually found their own charity, which focuses primarily on preservation, or counteracting any negative impact that the cruise world may have on the environment and on the ocean. So you can come in here, you can buy some souvenirs or have a read at what MSC are doing, which some of their work is pretty remarkable. Now here you've got the MSC World Europa ship model and you will find that directly outside the MSC shop, which is beside the photo gallery opposite MSC Foundation. Now in here, if you could imagine something being MSC branded or MSC World Europa branded, I can pretty much reassure you <laughs> that it'll be in here. So if you want t-shirts, if you want hats, if you want notepads, if you want your own ship model, if you want an inflatable beach ball, you name it, it's going to be in here. Now price wise, prices aren't, they're not low, but then they never are when you come to these cruise line shops. So yeah, I enjoy a look around. Now next door to the MSC shop, you've got Ola. And I I don't hold any secrets on here that this is one of my favorite speciality restaurants at sea, not just from MSC, not just on this ship, but from all of my cruises. I think one of the speciality restaurants that I get most excited about has got to be Ola. The quality in here is absolutely fantastic. The theming is great. I've never had any negative experiences with the crew in here. What I would say is that you can usually get an all-you-can-eat style meal in here for about 20 euros per head. And honestly, it's worth every single penny. You also can get frozen margaritas, which are apparently very, very good. But I actually didn't sample them on this cruise. I was, yeah, I was very well behaved. Now, directly opposite Ola, you've got the sushi bar, which is then followed by teppanyaki. So the sushi bar, which is what you're looking at at the moment, 
is out in the main promenade or galleria section and then when you go inside that bar you'll then find teppanyaki so what you're looking at now is still the sushi bar so you can see there you've got the main hallway just there and what i'll now take you in and show you is teppanyaki now from a price point of view i found that speciality dining on world europa was actually pretty decent value for what i was getting in return the one warning that i would give you is please if you're thinking of doing it book it before you get on the ship because you can quite often save a lot of money now msc will always charge you more to dine in speciality if it's not booked before you get on the ship but yeah i found the hikes were to be honest pretty significant on world europa so if you're thinking of speciality dining whether it's in here whether it's in the mexican whether it's elsewhere which i'll show you in this video definitely consider booking before you get onto the ship now the next venue sticking on speciality dining so you're probably getting a feel for the fact that speciality on world europa they all seem to be pretty close together now this is butcher's cut which uh, i'm potentially quite controversial here but i'm not a massive fan of an onboard steakhouse like i think they're good but yeah i prefer something a little bit different to what i might be able to get on land usually now butcher's cut does come very very well recommended i didn't try it on world europa but have tried it on other ships including msc virtuosa and the brand in here does come across really really strong now, during my cruise, the reason why I didn't try Butcher's Cut is because I couldn't get a table. I just couldn't get a reservation. I was on the ship for 21 nights, and the majority of those nights were completely full in here. What I could have done was I could have visited for lunch while the ship was in port, but I just didn't have any interest in doing that because I've tried it before. So maybe take it from the fact it was so well booked that it must be pretty good on World Europa. Now you can either sit inside or they've also got outdoor dining here. By when I say outdoor, you're obviously still inside, but you're out in that main promenade. Now directly beside Butcher's Cut, let's move in and look at the TV studio. Now this venue is where you'll find karaoke every single night of your cruise. The thing I would warn you about is that this is a really long, thin venue. So if you're looking for a good table where you can get a good view of the screen, you probably want to budget to get in here, to be honest, pretty early because I found that this venue filled up really, really quickly. If you travel solo, then the solo traveller meetups are also held in the TV studio every afternoon. Now, across the hall is Masters of the Sea. Now, I really, really like this venue. My big criticism of Masters of the Sea is on other MSC ships is that I just don't think it's a big enough venue. And I think they've maybe answered my call with this one. The way this is designed, it's done across two floors, which I'll show you more in a sec. Now, where you are now, we are now at the very back of the bar. So you can see here, as we pan round, there's another room on the left-hand side there. There's loads and loads and loads of seating in here. Now, at the far end, I did show you a second ago, but you've got those huge distilling tanks and believe it or not you actually can drink beer on msc world europa which is indeed brewed on msc world europa and i honestly can't believe i'm saying this but it's made from seawater so <laughs> yeah very strange anyway look let's shoot upstairs and let me show you what's up here now we're going to come back here later on in the video because this actually is a different venue and this is called the gin project now this is the onboard gin bar but it's all open to the pub down below so although the pub is only one floor it definitely feels like a good two-floored venue so yeah big big thumbs up from me on that now hey listen we're back down a deck now and i'm now looking at the onboard barber now i absolutely love the fact that as a gent you can come down here and get your hair cut in an environment that is not the spa now some people will really enjoy going to the spa for a haircut i get that and i'd imagine you probably still could as a gent but i really like the thought of coming in here into what feels like an old barber shop on the high street and getting your haircut in an afternoon 
Now the one thing that I would say is that haircuts on ships are always notoriously expensive so it's, it's never a good idea to wait until you're on board to get your haircut but yeah really nice theming and a really nice space. Now this here is the onboard theatre so we are now all the way at the very very front of the ship. As with the design of many other MSC ships you always enter from the top and drop down. Now for that reason accessible seating you'll find it at the very top and you won't find it anywhere else in the theatre. Now deck number eight, let's begin our tour of deck number eight by looking at this area at the very back of the ship. Now this is, this is one of my favourite parts of World Europa from a potential point of view, but I do think that they're missing a trick because yeah, it just, it never felt busy and I didn't feel as though there was attractions that were really pulling people out here. This to me is such a key sales point of this ship and yeah, it baffled me that it was so quiet for a lot of the day. Now what you've seen there is the 11 deck drop slide which is called Venom and we'll come back to that shortly. Well, we'll come back to that, maybe not shortly, but when we get all the way up to the top of the ship, I'll show you what that looks like from up there. Now the views from this part of the ship are absolutely beautiful because quite often with mega ships, you don't get full access to the ocean is the way that I would term it. It's quite often only by a promenade deck which wraps around some of the ship, but on here, it's fully open and deck eight on this ship actually does feel quite close down to the water so it is lovely to come pull up a chair at night or during the day and just watch the world go by now this open deck area is tied on to one of the bars which i'll take you into in a second these sofas are really really comfortable this what you're looking at right now this was actually before we started transiting through the suez canal so yeah, absolutely beautiful. The bit of advice I would give here, similar to what I've said with elsewhere, there's not a huge amount of seating here, so it will get busy and it will fill pretty quickly. Now, the bar venue that backs onto that open deck is the Malt Lounge. Now, this is the on-board cigar lounge and whiskey bar, and you can see here that you've got this section here, which is outdoors, and then you've got the section on the right hand side there which is indoors now let me take you into there now i don't recall people smoking inside here people definitely were smoking outside but anytime i came in this venue still felt pretty smoke free so unfortunately i can't confirm if you can or can't what i can confirm for you is that the drink selection in here is really really impressive now this venue did tend to operate until pretty late at night so I'm not convinced that I would be overly happy with one of those promenade balconies above this venue. But yeah, each to their own. I did hear people saying they were pretty soundproof. But yeah, just with the fact that you've got quite a lot of cigars on offer down here, not entirely sure I'd be sold on sleeping above it. But hey, I'll let you make your own mind up on that. Now, coming off that topic, let's look at Sweet Temptations. Now, this is directly across that World Promenade, so still right at the very back of the ship. And this is the onboard ice cream, milkshake, crepe, and frozen yogurt venue. Now, this is speciality, so it's not included in your cruise fare. I found, to be honest, from a price point of view, it felt pretty in line with what I would expect to pay on land. And... The thing that I did really enjoy about this was that nobody else really seemed to use it too much. So when you would come in here, even in the middle of the afternoon on a sea day, honestly you'd feel like you had the place to yourself. Now if you'd like to see more of what you can buy in here, then head over to my vlogs on my channel and you'll be able to see the day that I brought you in here because I ordered, yeah, a pretty impressive ice cream in here which, yeah, believe me, I finished every single bit of it but... Yeah, Sweet Temptations, I really, really like it and I think they've got the theming really, really spot on in there. So another venue that I really enjoy, which you'll find on the World Promenade on Deck 8, is the Coffee Emporium. Now, this is another venue which is not included in your cruise fare, so the majority of this part of the ship you do actually have to pay extra for. Now, even the food in here, it's not included, so you will pay extra if you're looking to have food which is included, then you can absolutely get that, but you'll get it from the buffet all the way up at the top of the ship. 
Now, you've got quite a lot of different flavors of coffee in here. So when you come in, you can pick your roast, pick your blend. They also have a blend that they are making directly on the ship. So you'll see, I think I'll show you in a second actually, the roasting machine. Now, if you'd like to come in and try your nose at smelling different flavors of coffee, then you can also do that in here as well. So one thing that World Europa has got pretty right is that a lot of the venues, a lot of the venues are pretty immersive. And this is one of them where you're not just coming in here to order a coffee. You're coming in here to learn a bit about coffee, smell coffee. I mean, the smell in here is just absolutely beautiful. And also sit down and spend a bit of time just enjoying it. Now you can either sit inside or you've also got outdoor seating as well. So yeah, lots and lots of choice. Now the next venue that I am going to show you today is La Pescaderia. Now this is another speciality dining option on board and you've got two different ways to dine here but let me come back to that in a second. Now I absolutely adore the theming in here. I just think it's so clean. I love the nautical theme and it ties in perfectly with the fact that this is a seafood venue on board. Now I found that from a price point of view this venue was pretty good. I did feel it was very, very quiet for my entire cruise. So as I said earlier, I was on World Europa for 21 nights and this is a venue that I never, ever saw to be busy. I never saw, to be honest, any more than probably five or six tables in here at any one time. So I'll be very intrigued to see if this venue survives or if in the future this may be tweaked a little to make it a little bit more popular. Now, as I said, there's two different ways to dine here. You've got the indoor restaurant, which you're looking at right now, and then I'll take you out and show you in a few minutes, but you've also got a takeaway counter. So if you do like the thought of an onboard seafood restaurant, and if you are into speciality dining, then you don't have to come and sit in with it, which I do really like that. I've been on ships recently where they seem to be trying more and more to have a takeaway concept as a speciality venue and yeah I, I think it's really going to take off so watch this space and let's see what happens but yeah you can either come in sit inside or you can sit outside at the takeaway counter now it is worth noting that this restaurant at the point of my cruise wasn't included in any type of multi-buy discount when you were buying speciality packages so a lot of msc venues you can buy like a three restaurant package, a five restaurant package. But when I cruised, this one wasn't actually included. So as I said, this is a takeaway counter. So you can see from a price point of view, pretty decent. You've got fish and chips with a beer for 11 euros. You've got, well, I'll leave you to have a look at that yourself. Opening hours, it opens twice a day and it's open pretty late into the night, which is ideal. Now, other things that are available for you on the World Promenade part of the ship is the high-end shopping boutiques. So you've got, out on the promenade, you've got the World of Watches, which is jewellery. You've then got the Omega shop that we looked at a second ago. And then you've also got the luxury accessory and luxury clothing boutiques, which I will show you in a second. Now, due to the way in which I cruise, I am not able to review <laughs> the luxury shopping boutiques for you. Maybe one day I'll be able to do that. But yeah, at this point in my cruising career, I can show you them, but I can't, um, yeah, I can't review them from a price point of view <laughs> yet, unfortunately. But yeah, what I would say with these again, they were never, ever busy. They didn't really seem to draw much of a crowd at all. Now, moving back inside. So that's the World Promenade at the back covered. And the next venue to look at is the World Galleria. Now, this is that triple height indoor galleria, which runs from the middle of the ship all the way down to the front. Now, what you saw there was the, the excursions booking desk. I almost said speciality there. The excursions booking desk. So you can book downstairs or up here. Now, this venue is the Elixir Mixology Bar. 
and I really, really like the concept of this venue. It's really playing on the fact that gin is now becoming more and more, by the day, trendier and fashionable. So in here, you can get a gin and tonic, you can get, well, you can get a number of different styles of drink, but look at how many mixers and how many compliments they have for that. What I said with the MSC shop earlier, if you can imagine it, it's probably MSC branded. And what I would say with this venue, is if you can imagine it in a drink, it's probably on offer in here. Now, you can either sit in the main restaurant section or in here, they've got this lovely, more, I guess, more private section. Now, this was never bookable during my cruise. I'd imagine it would, it would work really well as like a nice gin tasting section. So maybe on the seven night cruises, they might look to offer that kind of thing. But on the long 21 nighter, this just functioned as a gin bar and it, it seemed to be pretty popular. They've also got an onboard DJ who plays in here every single night. So yeah, definitely a vibe in there. Now directly next door, you've got Chef's Garden Kitchen. Now this venue is, I find this venue so cool. So the way this works is that they actually grow all of the herbs and the spices that will go into your dishes on board the ship. Now, all of those growth chambers, if you like, are all on show in the restaurant and I'll show you in a little second. The really lovely thing about this venue is you get so much natural daylight pouring in from those windows on the right hand side. You've also got outdoor dining available, which you should be able to see just poking through there on the right hand side. So yeah, big, big thumbs up from me. Now here is all the plants and all the herbs that are growing ready for your dinner. You've got all of these chambers here, and then there was more over the other side of the room as well. I I think the concept of this is really, really good. I can't decide yet if I think it's a gimmick, but hey, I guess time will tell on that one with how much uptake MSC get with this one. Now crossing over to the other side, first venue here is Fine Jewelry. Now I found this was probably the highest price point of jewelry on board. So yeah, head in here if you're looking for diamonds or if you're looking for just nice expensive jewellery and directly next door sticking to the thought of expensive we've got the onboard champagne bar now if you have a drinks package then all of the bars that i'm showing you in this video all of the bars are included so if you've got the full drinks package you can come in here you can enjoy a lovely glass of champagne either sitting inside or through here with loads and loads of daylight pouring through these huge windows you're probably getting a bit of a feel already for one of the big things that I adored about this ship. And it's the fact that throughout my entire cruise, I felt as though I had such a strong relationship with the ocean. If you've followed my channel for a while, then you'll know that since being on World Europa, I've cruised on the big Oasis class ships from Royal Caribbean. And I'm not sold on them, for example, due to the fact that I can't see the sea anywhere. So. Yeah, this is definitely a ship for an ocean lover. Now directly next door to Fizz, which was that champagne bar we were in a second ago, you're going to find this venue here, which is the Raj Polo Tea Lounge. Now, to be honest, this was another of my absolute favourite venues on board, because I find it quite rare on a ship this size with so many passengers that you can actually escape and find somewhere quiet to just chill out. Now, if you come in here, any time of day this opens quite early in the morning and it's open actually until kind of 10 11 o'clock at night you can come in here choose from an array of i believe it was 27 different flavors of tea that you can pick from you've also got a table here of snacks and then later in the afternoon that'll be full of cakes as well and then up in the back corner here you've got the piano so for a number of hours each day i believe it's an hour early afternoon and then an hour early in the evening they'll bring in a piano player and yeah this venue is just so chilled out. Top tip for me in here is to check out this terrace outdoors because a lot of people don't actually know this is here and it's totally reserved for people in the tea lounge. So it's always lovely and quiet. Now directly next door is the gin project. Now this is the upstairs of the pub that we were in earlier. So you have seen this venue before, but let me show you in a little bit more detail. Now, first thing to note is that you've got a sort of museum that talks you through how they brew the beer on board. And you've also got one of the only pool tables on board. So if you like pool, if you like snooker, 
then you need to find this table, which is just, as you can see there, directly beside the beer chambers, which you'll see from the pub. Now the Gin Project Bar, as the name suggests, is all about gin. So when you come in here, you've got all the gin displayed on the wall, and the bar in there is pretty well stocked as well. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Now, directly opposite the hallway, you've then got this restaurant. Now, this is a restaurant that's reserved purely for those on the Area package. So when you book an MSC cruise, you can book a couple of different layers of what they call an experience. So I often book Bella, which means that you don't really get too many added extras. But if you book Aurea, which is one of the top packages you can book, then you gain access to this restaurant. Now, I believe that dining in here means that you also don't have a set dining time, so you can show up to eat whenever. And one of the nice things about dining here is that it's the only included restaurant that features in that internal promenade. So if you remember back, all of the other venues that we've seen so far, whether it be the Butcher's Cut, Ola, they're all inside this kind of main Galleria section. So it's quite rare that you can sit with a view of that without having to pay extra for it. Now directly outside we're heading towards the spa and the first venue to look at here is the juice bar. So this, to be honest, is probably the easiest way to get your five a day. I really like swinging by here. They've got a huge menu. You can pretty much put everything in the juicer and yeah, they'll make whatever you want. Now that's directly outside the spa, which I did get access to, but the spa was closed. So it's worth noting what you're looking at now is the spa after hours. So it's a little bit quieter or a lot quieter than what it would normally look like if you were to visit when you're on your cruise. So the first thing you'll see in the spa when you walk in is the reception area. So you've got loads of really comfy sofas. You've got some TVs which are advertising all of the facilities in the spa one of which is the hair salon. So I mentioned earlier when we went into the gents bit that it's quite nice that the gents can go to a totally different venue because as you see here, this is very much a salon type vibe rather than a barber that you're getting elsewhere. So you've got that available to you. You've also got a tanning salon. So when you go in there, which I won't show you in that room, but it's just tanning beds really. And then after that, you've got a labyrinth of corridors with all of the different treatment rooms off of them. Now, this does go on forever. I think this must be one of the biggest spas that I've ever seen on a cruise ship. And it takes up that entire front of the ship section. So a really, really impressive scale. Now, I love a thermal suite on a cruise. And the thermal suite on World Europa definitely doesn't disappoint. When you look at the even the changing rooms, which is what I'm showing you now, the calibre and the quality in here just feels so high. The only thing that I would say is that during the day, this can be really, really busy. So I tend to visit here on a port day when the ship's docked and a lot of people are off. So you can see here, this is the main thermal suite area where you've got the swimming pool in front of you and then down both sides, you've got a number of steam rooms, a number of saunas and a number of different just other types of rooms that you can relax in. Now, I found the quality in here to just be absolutely excellent. Those loungers at the back are then protected by a waterfall during the day. It's really, really nice. Now, we're not going to look at decks 9 up to number 16 due to the fact that they're all passenger cabin decks, but you can check out those room tours elsewhere on my channel, which brings us up to deck number 18. So, MSC World Europa doesn't have a deck 17. I believe it's for superstition reasons, similar to how a lot of other cruise lines don't have a deck 13. So, the first thing you need to look at up on deck 18 is the indoor pool. So 18 is pretty much where you find the majority of your outdoor facilities, to be honest. You've got the indoor pool with the jacuzzis here, and I'll take you out in a second and show you the outdoor pool. What I would say is that the indoor pool on here was probably one of the highest quality that I've actually seen on a cruise ship. The only downside is that just due to the, the volume of passengers, it gets really, really busy in here. Now they do have two oversized jacuzzis which hang out either side of the ship and yeah, again, quality point of view is definitely there. Now in here, you've got your own shower so you don't have to nip out to the outside pool to wash prior to or after being in for a swim. And let me show you those jacuzzis that hang off the side. So yeah, indoor pool is open from before your breakfast in the morning and it closes about 9pm at night. It might even be slightly later than that. So yeah, if you like a morning or a night swim, absolutely not an issue. 
Now, coming out of that indoor section, you've then got the outdoor pool. So this pool looks slightly bigger than it actually is, which I'll bring you back and explain that in a second. But up at the top end of the pool, you've then got two, we'll call it dining venues, will we? So this one is like poolside food, and then you've also got the bar. Now that by food is just ice cream on this side, but if you come over to this side is where you'll get the hot food. So it's worth mentioning that these are on either side of the entrance into the buffet. So I'm just trying to get you to get your bearings on this top deck because it's a little bit tricky. Now the buffet on World Europa, let's head in and look at the first level. So you will notice that the theming of each deck of the buffet is totally, totally different. Personally, I prefer upstairs, but I do think that when you walk around here, it does look better than a lot of other cruise ship buffets. Again, point worth noting is that, again, there's going to be a lot of people in here. There isn't a great deal of material to absorb any noise in here, so it is quite loud. It is pretty busy. And yeah, I, I do find upstairs is a lot better for that, and hopefully you'll see that when we go up. But yeah, the general design in here, really, really impressed. And there are just so many chairs here that have got a full uninterrupted view of the ocean. So I actually quite enjoy just coming up here, grabbing breakfast and just chilling out with a coffee looking over there. Really, really good. Now, I did mention that the buffet is split on deck 18 and then the deck above, deck 19. Now, when you're looking at it, what you're seeing now is just your tea, coffee and your water station. When you look at it on a deck plan, you'll notice that it splits down either side of the world promenade down on deck 8. Now, those two sides of the ship are then connected via these corridors here, which are glass floored corridors, which go from one side all the way over to the other. Now, yeah, this maybe isn't for the faint hearted. So <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't fancy walking over here, then you just have to go back to the entrance and then loop around there and you'll be able to come over a solid floor that you can actually see the drop of about 10 decks. And over the other side of that is the MSC Pizza Station. So yeah, definitely make sure you check that out. In my case, multiple times a day. Now, one of the big hints for me or the top tip going into this buffet are these outdoor dining areas that I don't think a lot of people find because any time I would eat there, it was always really, really quiet. Now what you're now looking at is the view over to the back of deck 18. So we are actually on deck 19 looking down, but just to give you a feel for what that deck looks like, you've got the two forks going down either side, and then you've got essentially a mirror image on either side of the ship at the back. So over here, you've got one swimming pool, which is then replicated over the other side, and then you've got loads of open deck space, loads, loads of loungers, and that then takes you all the way down to the back of the ship, which I'll take you down and show you now. Now I hear a lot of people when they look at sunbathing at the back of the ship, they can get a little bit worried about the smoke or the soot coming out the funnels. What I would say is that on this ship, absolutely not an issue probably just due to the fact that World Europa is, is so new. Now, at the very back, you've then got a glass walkway. Now, what you're looking at down there is the back of the promenade deck that we were at earlier. So yeah, again, a great view, but if you're not, if you're not very good with heights, it's worth noting that at this point, you are 18 floors above the ocean. So yeah, you're pretty high up. Now, moving up another deck, so let's check out deck number 19. Now, we're going to begin on deck 19 all the way back at the very very front of the ship now this is where msc yacht club is which is the most premium part of the ship and this is where they operate the ship within a ship concept now you can see here you've got the only swarovski crystal staircase on the entire ship in yacht club which is funny because usually you'd find them absolutely everywhere and that's in this top sail lounge which is a lounge that if you've got a room in yacht club you can come and chill out in here have afternoon tea use the bar, listen to some live entertainment. And out the front, they've got this absolutely stunning wraparound deck. Now, one thing that does actually quite annoy me about an MSC ship at the moment is that they've protected that forward facing view for Yacht Club guests. So yeah, amazing views in here that nobody else on the ship can actually get. 
Now what you're looking at now is the view from the MSC Yacht Club restaurant down into the top sale lounge. So this restaurant is blocked specifically for people that have got cabins in the Yacht Club part of the ship. So that generally creates a much more calm, much more quieter environment. And I actually do know quite a few people who sail in Yacht Club and they don't actually leave this part of the ship at any point. So yeah, each to their own. I also know people who book Yacht Club but spend most of their time elsewhere on the ship, but it's nice to have this available to them if they want to have a quieter night. Now, the, f the Yacht Club facilities on World Europa are really, really impressive, actually. You've got the restaurant, you've got the lounge, and you've also got this section here, which is the outdoor grill, and then directly behind that, you've got all the Yacht Club sun decks, which I couldn't get on video just because they were really busy for this cruise, but really, really nice space. Now, coming out of Yacht Club, back into where everyone else is, I guess, the first venue to look at is the Botanic Bar. Now this is a bar that looks directly down onto that botanic pool that we were at earlier and then it wraps around both sides bringing you out to here which is back out looking down on the outdoor pool. Now I mentioned earlier about the pool not, not being as big as it looks and that's just due to the fact that it's got a raised section in the middle so you can swim lengths but those lengths will stop halfway down the pool so you can't go all the way. Now Directly next door, you've got the Hall of Games. Now, this is the onboard gaming arcade. And as I said earlier, if you're planning to use the arcade on your cruise, make sure that you load your card up using a fun pass, which usually means that you'll get a good bit more onboard spend than doing it on a pay-as-you-go basis. And directly next door to that, you've got the F1 racer. Now, usually I wouldn't try this kind of thing on a cruise, but one of my friends had a bit of credit left over at the end and took me in for a shot. And do you know what? I am now... A really big advocate of it. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Now this video was taken at night but if you look out to the left you can see the ocean so you're essentially racing a car on top of the ocean which is yeah <laughs> a bit mad. Now heading towards the back of the ship you've now got the Brasserie Buffet and this is this is the second deck of the buffet which is what I mentioned earlier is definitely my preferred part of the buffet. I think the theming in here is so much nicer. The materials used absorb a little bit of noise a bit better. So I never found it to be as loud up here. Now, during my cruise, I cruised on World Europa for 21 nights. And I found that during my time on board, this buffet usually was only open for breakfast and dinner. So it wouldn't open at lunch. And even at that, the hours up here were a little bit less than the deck 18 section. So they seem to be putting most people through deck 18 and having this one open for what feels like overflow. Now, it is worth mentioning that the food up here, I found it was identical to the food downstairs. So it's a very different experience just due to the environment that you're in, but the actual food quality and the food standard and the food available is pretty much the same across both decks. So don't worry. And you've also got in here loads and loads of water stations. So Quite a lot of people always ask, oh, can I get water all the time or do I have to be on a drinks package? And these machines are on 24 hours a day, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about on that front. Now, also in the buffet, you'll find tea and coffee. And by tea, I mean normal or regular tea. And then you've got five or six different flavours of tea available 24 hours a day as well. And this here is just showing you back out to that outdoor deck area. So... Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of this. I hope that not everyone discovers it because it's really lovely on a ship this size to find these little pockets that remain quite quiet during the day. Now, out the back of the ship is where you'll get some of the best views of the wake despite the fact you're quite high up and actually quite far away from the back of the ship. So this is an outdoor bar area where you can bring your food from inside. You can also order a drink and just look down all the way to the back. And directly next to the buffet, you've got the kids' clubs. Now, MSC do operate with a number of different kids' clubs, the same way that the majority of other cruise lines do as well. And you can see here, those clubs are split by age group. Now, just due to the fact that I didn't have kids on the cruise, nor was I cruising with anyone with kids, I actually don't show you inside there, but there are a number of other channels that will do that. 
Okay, now heading up to deck 20, so don't worry, we're nearly at the end, <laughs> nearly at the end now. The first venue to show you here is the MSC Gym. Now this gym is open from 6am until 9pm, so no excuses to not check this out while you're on holiday. Now what I would say is that this cruise actually is one of the best equipped gyms that I've seen on a cruise ship. I would only really use this when it was definitely off peak and most people would be either at dinner or still in bed so I can't vouch for what this is like during peak periods but I would imagine being honest it's probably similar to pretty much every other venue on the ship in the respect that there's a lot of people on so it'll probably get pretty busy. Now hopefully you can see here there's loads of equipment there's loads of each type of machine as well so I'd be really surprised if you're coming in here unable to get on anything. Now you've got lots of cardio and in addition to that you've got numerous racks of free weights. So I'll show you one here and then you've got sort of two or three more of them which you can see coming in over to the side now. Now in addition to the gym floor you've then got a spin studio so you can come in here you can do spin classes which would all be digital because we've got the screens there and they also come with a human instructor as well so yeah really really big thumbs up from me actually and directly outside the gym you've then got the kids water park now you do have two water parks on this ship which i'll show you the other one shortly you've got the kids one and the adults one so in here this is usually all filled with water but for obvious reasons i showed you it before they opened for the day now this is also post clean so what it's meant is that they've drained it all to clean it all prior to me taking this video so yeah, usually that pool, for example, would have water in it. Now you can see here, there's loads of places for your kids to play. Actually, this would pass a good bit of time. All these things that are stuck to the roof then spray water as well. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now, speaking of water parks, the second one to show you today is the adults water park. Now this is the main one on board and up here you'll find what I think is probably the most intricate water park that I've seen at sea so far. Now you've got a number of different slides. Here's the safety regulations if you want to have a look at them. But in short, you've got four main slides up here. You've got, first up, the blue slide that you can see here is your virtual reality slide. Now what happens with that is when you get to the top, you'll be given the option to ride either wearing glasses or not wearing glasses. Now. What they do is they essentially show you a story as you go down or there's one that will show you a jungle scene for example and you feel like you're sort of on rapids going through the jungle. It's actually really good fun. The two green slides are then the racer slides so you can race one of your friends coming down or then you've got the pink slide which is, well the pink slide is a drop slide which is one of those ones that you stand at the top and the floor falls away so yeah, good luck if you want to go on that one. Now directly next door to the water park you've then got the MSC Sportplex. Now in here you've got first of all a bar area with table games You've then where you can get drinks and stuff. You then head out past the ticket booth into the main court arena. Now I absolutely love this space, it's great how many different things they can do out here. But you can either come, you can play sports, so for example basketball out here or you can come out here for rollerblading discos or you can come out here and play bumper cars now a lot of these things are available at multiple times a day so if you like to do that sort of thing at night then you absolutely can do that they turn all the lights on it turns the atmosphere out here really is quite good or if you'd rather do it during the day that's usually an option as well especially on a day at sea now directly upstairs you've got a smaller arcade now this arcade is a lot smaller than the one that we saw down at luna park earlier but again quite a good place for the kids to spend a bit of time if you're wanting to relax down at the bar which is just a deck below. Now directly outside that gaming arcade you'll find the surfers bar. Now, this is where you can come out on the deck to enjoy a drink during the day. Now, you've also got your Coca-Cola machine here, so if you've got a drinks package, then you can come and just fill up your cup here. 
I've seen that on a number of cruise lines this year so far, so that seems to be fairly common practice. And then you've also got an absolute ton of sunbathing space out here, so do not worry about finding a lounger on this ship. I didn't find it a problem at all, so hopefully that's continuing now. Okay, one of my favourite things about this ship, let me show you Venom Drop. Now this is the slide that takes you all the way from up here right down to deck 8. So this slide comes out in the middle of the World Promenade and at the point of launch this was the longest dry slide at sea. So yeah, I would definitely recommend getting on there and experiencing what that feels like to drop all the way down on one of the biggest ships in the world. Now deck 21, so we're actually getting to the point now where we're right at the end of the video and deck 21 is really just different sunbathing areas. So up here you'll find a deck or a terrace that wraps around where the funnel stack is. Now this is quite good because it's directly above the kids water park on one side and at the other side it's directly above the surfers bar that we've just looked at. So a lot of people don't actually venture up here because there isn't really too much of an attraction here, especially for children. So I found on my cruise, this area really would be pretty much adult only. So if you want to come on a ship and escape the young kids, then this is probably quite a safe bet of a deck for you to do it. I really, really enjoyed chilling out up here. The only problem is because the glass is quite high and you are directly in front of the funnels, it can be quite shaded up here, so you need to just watch that. But hey, look, that's a one hour full tour of MSC World Europa, which is one of the biggest cruise ships on the planet. Now, what I would love to know is, would you cruise on this ship? What do you think? Would you go for this? Or would you rather cruise elsewhere? And if you are booked on this, have the best time and come back and let me know how it is. But thanks so much for watching and I'll catch up with all of you in my next video. Cheers guys. Bye.